Welcome back, everyone. I've got lesson eight for you. It's going to be all about multiplying decimal numbers times whole numbers. And I've even got another fun real life problem for you guys. We're going to make nachos again and do some real life math. So let's dig in. That looks so delicious. I cannot wait to eat that. So if you watched my adding decimal numbers video, and you can always go back and watch that one, you helped me to figure out my total for all the ingredients for my nachos. So it ended up being $12.87 for all the ingredients for one pan of nachos. And now I want to take this problem in a different direction and I want to find out what would happen. Let's say I want to make more of those delicious nachos. I want to make six pans of nachos. Maybe I'm cooking for a lot of people. And so what problem, what math problem can we do to figure out the total cost of six pans of nachos? All right, great job. We can multiply the total cost times six. Okay, now let's dig into this problem. So if you haven't seen my video, my last video on multiplying whole numbers, it might be a good time to switch over to that one because I go over all of the strategies of uh, multiplying whole numbers. One nice thing to know, though, is that when we multiply a decimal number times a whole number, it really is the same procedure. So we're still going to multiply every digit times six. So we want to make sure we multiply all of these digits times the six. And we're going to start the same way. So seven times six, you got it, is 42. Now, if you're having trouble with remembering your six facts, this might be a, another good time to make yourself a little T-chart. And what you can do is you can start counting by sixes, and that way you don't have to think about it a whole lot. You can just look over here. If I count six, 12, then I know that two times six is 12. Three, I can count six more. Okay, I can even count on my fingers if I need to. It's 18. Okay, four is 24. And you can just keep going so that you have all of this listed and then it makes it a little bit easier when you're multiplying. Okay, I'm gonna stop there, but if you want to pause the video and make your own, you can. All right. 8 times 6 is 48, plus the 4. Ooh, that seems like a little bit of a tricky problem, so I'm going to write it down over here. There's nothing wrong with kind of jotting down a little note, just to make sure you don't make a mistake in your head. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Okay, 52. So I'm going to write that down with regrouping. It's okay, that decimal there, just ignore it for now. We can keep regrouping just like we normally would when, when we're working with whole numbers. Six times two is 12, plus the five is 17. Okay, just almost done. One times six is six, plus the one is seven. Okay, now the only thing we have left is to figure out the decimal point. So you can kind of think about what is the most reasonable answer what do you guys where do you guys think the decimal point would go what would be the most reasonable amount of money okay let's test out your prediction here so if i put my decimal point right here does seven dollars sound reasonable 
Okay, hopefully you said no because, you know, $12.87 is one pan of nachos, so we know it's going to be bigger than that, bigger than $12. So let's keep going. What do you think about $77.22? Okay, a lot of you are thinking that that's the right one. Let's keep going, though, just to see. What about $772? Uh, way too big, huh? Okay, so I think you guys were right then. $77.22 makes the most sense. Also, let me show you a, um, a strategy to figure it out for sure. Okay, so what I ask myself is how many decimal places are in my problem, in my two factors? So I see one, two two decimal places. So my answer should also have two decimal places. So I kind of go here and then two and place my decimal. Okay, great job helping me figure out that if I wanted to serve six pans of those nachos, it would cost $77.22. Thank you so much for helping me. Okay, I thought we could do one more real life problem where uh, we're working with decimals and whole numbers. So here is my problem. It says Mrs. Easley ran 1.5 miles per day to prepare for a 5K. If she practiced 14 times, how many miles did she run? So what problem do you think I'm going to do in this one? All right, well, if you said that since we did 1.5 per day 14 times, we must be doing a multiplication problem of 14 times 1.5, okay? This number right here, the 5K, is not something we need to multiply or to work with. It's just the the type of race I'm doing, how, how far the race is. But I'm talking about the practicing, so 14 times 1.5. So why don't you guys set this up and give it a try using the same strategies as you did with whole numbers, and then we'll check our work. Okay, so hopefully you remembered in our whole numbers that we always start with the smallest place value. Now I know this one's a little weird because we lined up the numbers not by place value. So here's a ones place in 14, here's a tenths place. The reason why that's okay is because we're just going to multiply all the numbers like we had before and then we're going to place our decimal so it will make sure that we have the correct place value. So we're gonna start with everything on the top number times five. Okay, so four times five is 20. And then one times five is five plus the two is seven. Okay, so now I'm done with my five. Do you guys remember the chant that we like to say? Yay, okay, it's X, O, no, go. Say it with me again. X, O, no, go. The X stands for that we're done with the five. This O stands for a zero holding that place value. And the no go is to help us not forget and accidentally add that again at some point. We don't want to do that. Okay, now let's do everything times the one. Four times one is four. One times one is one. Okay, and what do I do with my partial products, my two partial products? Great job, we just add them up. It'll give us our total. Okay, so now I've got this number right here. Now, we never want to forget that at the very end, we've got to place our decimal. So same as the last problem, we count how many decimal place values there are. There's none in the 14, that's just a whole number. 
but there is one place in my bottom number. So I just need to move my decimal over once right here. So that means I ran 21 miles to get ready for the race. Whew, that was hard work. All right, here's one to try on your own. Don't forget to do all the same process as whole numbers and at the end, place your decimal. I'll give you a second to try and then we'll check your work.